Hi friends, if you like my videos, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. So in this video, let us discuss about lipofiction, where this lipofiction method is also called as liposome encapsulation. So this will be your third video on our DNA technology of gene transfer techniques. So firstly, to enter into the topic of liposome encapsulation, firstly you have to know about what is meant by these liposomes, right? So liposomes are small microscopic or minute vesicles which are spherical ball like structure it is made up of lipid which is also called as phospholipid bilayer it contains hollow central space so if you see the diagram properly then you can understand these statements so the what i have said to the liposome are small spherical and microscopic in nature right it can be visible only with the help of a microscope and it is made up of phospholipid bilayer Phospholipid bilayer is nothing but this is the cell membrane of a cell, right? And that cell membrane is made up of phospholipid bilayer. Bilayer is nothing but it consists of two layers. That's nothing but outer phospholipid layer and lower, I mean inner phospholipid layer. Okay, so this will be your outer phospholipid layer and this will be your lower phospholipid layer. And this both constitutes together to form a phospholipid bilayer right and it contains hollow central space so at the center region of the cell it consists of hollow space that's nothing but the empty space right here there is a presence of the empty space right so now this is called as a liposome so i have i know that you got a basic idea about this liposomes so now let us learn the technique which is involved in this lipofiction okay so it is also called as lipofiction or lipofiction so now let us discuss about the total technique which is involved in this lipofiction so now we are going to take a liposome right and now here what i have said you this is a, this is nothing but the liposome but this is a complex structure to understand for purpose and this is a normal simple structure which you have to remember so now this will be your liposome right and now you are going to take a dna molecule that's nothing but the nucleic acid and now you are going to inject this dna into the liposome once the dna will enter into the liposome then that complex is called as liposome nucleic acid complex so now what you are going to do, you are going to take a liposome. We know that in the liposome there will be absence of the DNA because it consists of hollow central space which I have said you. And we are going to take a DNA molecule and we are going to inject the DNA into the cytoplasm of the liposome. And it leads to the formation of liposome nucleic acid complex. Right? So that's what I have mentioned here. Liposome nucleic acid complex can fuse with the cell membrane of other host cell. So here the formation of liposome nucleic acid complex has been done right and now this liposome nucleic acid complex has a capacity to move towards another cell and gets interacted to that cell and that cell is called as host cell right so now let us see how this phenomena occurs so in the second step what you are going to do you are going to take a host cell so in this host cell what you are going to do we, we, are, we have already done liposome nucleic acid complex formation right so now you are going to uh, place uh, this liposome nucleic acid complex and host cell in a single culture plate then what happens is that this liposome nucleic acid complex will move towards this host cell and once it moved towards the host cell then what happens is that liposome nucleic acid will get fused with this host cell and once this complex will get fused with the host cell then what happens is that the cell membrane will get ruptured and the cell membrane will get opened in such a way that the nucleic acid which is present in the liposome will enter into the host cell exactly right so normally what happens the interaction of liposome nucleic acid complex will be done towards the host cell in such a way that the cell wall will get ruptured and once the cell wall or the cell membrane will get ruptured then the dna which is present in the liposome nucleic acid complex will enter into the host cell right so that's what i have mentioned here the dna will enter into the host cell and in the next step what happens is that finally the dna which is present in that liposome will enter into the nucleus of this host cell now this dna which is present in this host cell is called as recombinant dna why it is recombinant d why it is called as recombinant dna because it is present in a recombinant cell so why it is called as recombinant cell because it consists of recombinant dna and in the same way what i wanted to say is that here this cell is modified it is cell is modified how it is modified because we are applying a technique called as gene transfer technique so what is meant by gene transfer technique here we have we are transferring the genetic material from one cell to the other cell right so this is one of the cell which is called as liposome cell and that nucleic acid which is present in the liposome will get transferred into the host cell so here the transfer has been occurred right hence it is called as gene transfer technique so now coming to the statement once the complex gets fused to the host cell, then the nucleic acid or the DNA will get transferred into the host cell. That's what we have done here. 
so in this way the lipofixation process will be done where the gene from the liposome will get transferred into the host cell and it forms a called as a recombinant cell which consists of the recombinant dna so this is about the theory of this lipofixation so now let us see how the process i mean how the protocol will be done practically for this lipofixation process so now to discuss about the practical procedure of this lipofixation you are going to take two cuvettes in one of the cuvet you are going to take fluorescent oligos and in the second cuvet you are going to take the liposome solution which consists of the liposomes fluorescent oligos means what fluorescent oligos are nothing but the glowing nucleic acids so this nucleic acids will exhibit the property of fluorescence that's nothing but it produces a color right that's nothing but the glowing nucleic acids so in you are going to take glowing nucleic acids in one of the cuvet and in the second cuvet you are going to take the liposomes and now you are going to add this fluorescent oligos or as the glowing nucleic acids into this liposomes you are going to pour the content which is present in this cuvette to the second cuvette right and now this in this cuvette what will happen the liposome and fluorescent oligos formation occurs i mean the you know the mixture of this fluorescent oligos and liposomes will be present in this second cuvette in the next step what you are going to do is that you are going to incubate this uh, this mixture for 5 minutes and in the next step what you are going to do you are going to take a petri dish so now you are going to take a petri dish and in this petri dish you are going to add this mixture along with this mixture you are going to add the monocyte cells or else any type of host cells right and now what you are going to do this petri dish petri dish it is also called as petri plate or culture plate okay and now we are going to incubate this petri dish for 24 hours at 37 degree celsius so this will be your next step and finally you are going to do the observation after 24 hours so what is the observation which will be lead so here which i have already explained where the liposome will get interacted to the host cell host cell or the monocyte cell which have which we have taken right and we know that the liposome will consist of the nucleic acid mixture right in the cuvette itself we have taken the nucleic acid mixture over here right here we have taken the nucleic acid mixture into the liposomes so here in that liposomes the nucleic acids will be present so don't forget that the nucleic acids has a presence of the fluorescence that's nothing but which can produce as the color right so now what happens that the nucleic acid which is present in the liposome will enter into the host cell and this mechanism can be visible with the help of a fluorescent microscope so why it can be visible only with the presence of the fluorescent microscope because we have added here fluorescent nucleic acids such that the nucleic acid will produce as a color and that mechanism which can be observed with the presence of that color which will be produced by the nucleic acids when only it can be seen with the help of a fluorescent microscope so thank you for watching this video students if you like my explanation just do like and subscribe and notes on this topic will be given in the whatsapp group and the link of that whatsapp group will be given in the description box so by using that link you can join us in the whatsapp group and you can ask the notes over there